Can we all hope? Um, can we our church a few weeks ago on Wednesday night? And uh, I was having a, I was having a time. I was having a time. <laughs> okay. And and God gave her a word for me that was timely and needed and encouraging and uplifting and just so peaceful. I knew, I knew, I knew this woman was just a woman of God. Calls out his heart. So I started talking to her. I talked to Pastor Juan about, you know, see what she's thinking of my thing. I said, you know, we have this whole meeting. Did you speak for her? And she and I spent close to 10 hours together just kind of talking about the things God didn't know each other. And uh, she has a worldwide vision, a worldwide vision to touch hearts and lives. In front of her fire says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And that's what we're seeing about this morning, being free. I'm back to y'all, but I am so thankful that I'm not who I was. I think about that and just wonder, what in the world was I thinking? Well, I wasn't thinking about the Lord. That's what I wasn't thinking. Okay? But he has set us free, and we should be so excited about that. Um, Gabriel um, ministers to nations by going into countries and building wells for the best of villages. Um, setting up orphanages. She's had the pleasure and her blessing and the honor to be on TVN. Um, she's sat her some awesome teachers. I'll let her maybe share some of that. But I just want to introduce to you though, today, Dr. Capital Hope, who comes with prophetic fire of healing revival. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
scream at him and you tell him to get out of your life. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit that has bothered this good woman of God. No, 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 no. The devil never robs an empty warehouse. That means she's full of good gifts. And he needs to go after her. So no more. Today is her day of deliverance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Young lady. Young lady, Beth. You are free in Jesus' name. Beth, you are free in Jesus' name. Beth, you speak, I am free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Beth, say every foul spirit. Every foul spirit. That has bothered my life. Is gone. Now. In Jesus' name.
I know there's more for me to do. I know there's a greater plan, but I'm here just for the now, and it pays the rent, and it does this, and it does that. Anybody? Okay, you get it, you get it. Nehemiah prayed heavy one day, and he said, Lord, I know you have more for me. I'm, this, this sweet man, this sweet little man was so kind and so sweet, and he was dispensable with a sip of poison. He was a government employee that stood in front of the king, and when they handed the king his wine, Nehemiah had to sip it first. And if Nehemiah didn't drop over dead, then he could hand the king the cup. But if he dropped over dead, then, oh, get his body out of here. Bring me another cup. So I must have poisoned the, the wine. Imagine having a paycheck where every day you could die. And Nehemiah cried and said, God, this pays the bills. But this isn't me. This isn't me. This is not what my sermon is today, but the Lord knows what he's doing. He needs to speak to some people here today. So he got on his knees and he fasted and prayed and then called out to God like you do today. In Jeremiah 33, 3. You know, there's levels of prayer. There's fasting and praying. And then there's, Father! Where is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? I need a miracle now. That's the kind of prayers he listens to. Not, bless thou this day. Please. You're only entertaining yourself because he's tuned out. Those around you may like you for five minutes and hate you tomorrow. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's a waste of time because I have words more accountable for it when we get to heaven. Speak from the heart or don't speak at all. Father! I need you now! For my children, my grandchildren, my career, my marriage, everything. Call unto me, sweet little Jeremiah. Was in prison, Jeremiah's grotto, you know, the little prison. You don't think he fasted to pray? Most Christians that get thrown in prison wrongfully have usually refused the food. They are already fasting and praying, but that wasn't good enough for God. Are you hear me, ladies? That wasn't good enough. He's saying, Draw closer, there's a lot more of me that you only have a portion of. So he says in verse 33, 3, Call unto me, Jeremiah, and I will answer you. He not only will hear, but I'll answer you. And then he blesses you and he says, And I'll show you great and mighty things that you had no idea. Woo! That's for you. Nehemiah called unto God. And God said, no problem. Now he knew. He saw his vision. You ever had a dream and a vision from God and say, hey, that's one. Yeah? Dreams, visions? Who has dreams, visions? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you say, Lord, that's for me. He did. And now he went to work one day. And he's sad. He's standing before the king. And the king loved his employee. Are you kidding? He was the nicest man in the whole kingdom. Because he knew he could die at the second of it, and he had to, and he had to bring it to keep his job. So his boss says, what's wrong, Nehemiah? Sir, I have a vision, and I need a vacation. Can you please grant me a vacation? Yes, sir, what would you like? Well, my people. I'm sorry, sir, that I know my job, I could die. And before I die, I know one of these days I'll drink it, and I'll die. But can I please fulfill my call before? Can my destiny settle? The boss said, absolutely, Nehemiah. How much money do you need? Do you know that what the, what the king gave him back then was equivalent to $100,000 to him? He said, Nehemiah, you are such a good person. I love you. Just make sure you come back. And the queen said, I'm in on it too. Let me give him some money. Then they gave him a passport and said, go. So he left. And when Nehemiah left, he didn't run to the go, look at what the king gave me. He had no pride. Look at what the king gave me. Look. Well, most of us would do that. The old Gabrielle sure would have done it. I know. Look. Look at me. Look at me. Well, I learned. When you say look at me, they'll say, oh, no. Out of the way. Look at him. So he hid out in the Motel 6 for three days and fasted and prayed even more. Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have all this money from the king. I'm not splurging any of it. I know it's your money and I have a position and a call of God. I need to do it right. 
I'm going to put everything I have into it. No distractions. He got out there, and I'm going to fast forward. Within 52 days, a month and a half, well, almost two months, two months, he finished his job, erected the wall that his people brought back all their cars that had been repossessed, all their houses that had been repossessed, all their, their, their um, uh, investments that had been taken. He restored a whole city in 52 days. And then he silently, amen. And then he silently walked his way out. See you later, y'all. Give glory to God. Amen, amen. 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 Since he can do it, you can do it. That's right. You just have to pay the price. What's the price? Call out to me. Set aside who thinks what and when what. Set aside the TV program and this phone call and that phone call and this. And say, Lord, this is my time with you. I'm going to call unto you because you are my foundation. And how dare I walk out that door without talking to you first. Holy Spirit, would you please go with me? And you'll be amazed how your life will turn the right side. <laughs> if I could please get to my message. Does any of you have a little piece of paper? I see you do. Does any, can, can you write down? So just two Bible verses. Two Bible verses and five points. Because this is a five-part series that I can squish down into two parts, and I'll give you the appetizer today. The rest is available. David, can you bring me my books real quick, hon, and the CD? I just want to show the ladies, and if they want to take a look at it afterwards, you may take a look at it as you're getting your pen and paper. Today's message is titled, and I want everybody to write this down, and I mean everybody, because you're going to need it tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. You don't have to remember who Gabrielle Hope is, you don't have to remember this, but you need to remember the word of God. Amen. This is going to help you go to the next level. Yes, sir. Come on up here, David. Just to let you know, I brought a few products that can help you. This is the series uh, that is sold that the message is teaching today. It's called Destiny Settled. You can go on my website at Hope Harvest Storehouse and order it, or you can uh, get it back there. For everyone that orders anything today, I'm going to give them this book for free. I have ran out. It's one of my most popular books that are sold all over the world. It's called Why Does God Allow It? Uh, eight Reasons in the Word of God Why Disasters Happen to Good People. And it kind of helps us so they don't happen again. Some is not our fault, but some is. Amen? This one is another one of my undeniable, unforgettable, supernatural encounters. My precious friend, where did she go? Uh, uh, Elizabeth and I talked about this. Uh, one of my most favorite books. I used to model for Miller Beer and Coors Beer. Sears catalog. Thought it was all about, everything was about Gabrielle. Didn't care about anybody else but me. It was sickening. It was horrible. And one day, another lady walked into my green room and told me to get off the devil's platform and to get on God's platform. Never saw her again. She disappeared as she went through the security camera. So I know it was an angel. Wow. I have been uh, to 18 different countries preaching the gospel. Um, I'm an orphan. Uh, our parents threw us to the curb. There's a whole story behind that, which is another book. But since then, it, it, it gave me a great love for the orphans, for the love that they need. And also, um, been through marital issues, so I understand this lady right here. <laughs> it just makes you want to hug ladies that have ever had a hard time and say, don't worry, it gets better. Get, get in tune with God and psh, set it all behind you, it Amen. gets better. Amen. Amen. So I, I got along with the Lord and I said, if you're real, prove yourself to me. I hear all these religions, prove yourself to me. And one night at 3.30 in the morning, I closed my eyes and the ceiling opened up. Now, any of you, I know you have. You would not be attacked like you have if you hadn't. And I know you have, and I know you have. You have dreams and visions, spiritual encounters to where you have out-of-body experiences. But you can't tell people. Because they're either jealous, competitive, or they think you're half crazy. <laughs> That's why he said, don't throw your pearls before. So you have to be careful who you tell. Because you get in touch with her. I can sit with her at the table. I can sit with her. I can sit with her and say, you know what? I want to hear what happens to you. Because I know. I can tell they've been. They've tapped into that supernatural realm. And they would not think you're crazy. They would compete with you and say, well, guess what happened to me too? No, oh, that happened to me too. No, they would say, let teach me more. Let me tell you what I know. 
I mean, just swap stories. It's so much fun. Amen? Amen. Well, that morning at 3.30, the ceiling split open, and I went to heaven. And I walked around heaven with my best friend, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Changed my whole life forever. I set aside Gabrielle, and I said, Lord, you gave me my looks. I'm not going to deny him. I'm not going to do anything against him, so I'm going to use him for the Lord. Maybe I can... Maybe I can get more people. So now I minister a lot in Hollywood. Maybe I can get more people to, to come to you. Just use me for you in more ways than myself. It's amazing when you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus Christ. How it changes He just hands you the gift of the Holy Spirit and says, Don't worry, I'll be back. And the Holy Spirit goes with you everywhere. It's beautiful. That's what this book is about. It talks about my heaven encounter. And all the transfigurations and late and translations that people go through. I'll just tell you one little tiny story. One time I was in the city back east, and one of my staff invited me to their daughter's uh, Christmas Christmas uh, what do you call it uh, musical. And uh, I had two weeks before that I had had a translation, and the translation is when you're body is sleeping and your spirit is picked up by Philip. Your spirit is picked up and dropped somewhere else. Y'all know? Y'all okay. know. And it's not crazy. It's more real than you know. And I was sleeping and I could feel my body sleeping but my spirit was over in the house. There was a what they called a mixing party going on and I heard hard music and I saw this bowl with all these pharmaceutical pills in it and I saw alcohol walking just, just sitting around, people walking around, I don't see it was from the leg down, but there was one guy standing in the kitchen, and I walked right over to him, and I said, Sir, stocky blonde kid, maybe 17, 18 years old, stocky, real handsome looking, if you drink that drink and take those pills, every child that I saw their legs are going to be going to your funeral tomorrow. He didn't say anything. He just... I remember hearing in the spirit the pills dropping on the floor. Set the glass down. Never looked at me. Walked out the door. Wow. Instantly I was back in my body. So I quit. I keep a pen and paper by my bed. So instantly I got up and I wrote that down. Lord, I don't know what that is, but on this night and this time, this happened. Lord, pray he makes it to heaven. Now he's free, at least from that party. Now take it the next step. This isn't the end. Christmas party two weeks later, or maybe three weeks later, I don't know exactly. I'm sitting in the front row and my telephone, my cell phone goes off. Ring! And the musical lady finally turns around like, please find your phone in that big purse of yours because it kept ringing and ringing and everything was black. Well, by the grace of God, God had a plan. As I was reaching down to look at the phone, I was so embarrassed and I'm looking up at the lady and to her right. I'm staring at him. Oh, that's the kid. At the end of the music, I was out for the rest of the time. I didn't care what they played. I was focused on that young man, and he was focused on me. At the end, my friend sitting here, I never said a word, because it's not about us. He came down off that little, the little steps came over to me and hugged me so hard, I thought all the air was going to come. He cried great big crocodile tears, and so did I. Never said, who are you? I never said, who are you? He just hugged, and he left. And I walked away. And my friends were like, who's that? I didn't know you knew anybody. I said, oh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> never told him, because I'd be throwing a person for some Sorry. You cannot tell everyone all the goodness that happens to you. You ladies are select few this morning in this room that can handle it. Amen? Amen. You get it. <laughs> know that because it happened to me, it can happen to every single one of you and not be here this morning. Thank you. My message for today, by the way, that was in that book. That, that story is in this book. What's the name of that book? Uh, this one is called Undeniable, Unforgettable, Supernatural Encounters. Okay. 
Okay, so here's the here's the message for today, the series. You can get the single just for today, or you can get the series. That's that book. This one is the one that I wrote right after I got back from heaven. It's actually a series. This is only volume one. But Jesus taught me in heaven the difference between a lukewarm and a hot Christian. And uh, it, it sold out of Barnes and Noble for two years straight. So I have, these are the only ones that I have left back there because it was so popular. I had more of the rest I literally out of. And this is the story of my life, uh, Royal Steps. This is the one that they're going to be making a movie out of starting in July. By the, by the grace, it's a Christian movie, and it's not going to be condemning. It's all about forgiveness. My parents threw all the kids to the orphans, to the orphanages, to the foster homes, and everywhere. My mother kind of went crazy after having 13 children and bringing her nutrition. Way back years ago, I'm old. Let me just say I'm somewhere between 50 and 60. Okay, but for me. Now, I'm not going to say all you guys are all, I'm going to talk about me, okay? So back then, as you all know, that are my age, Parents were always in the, the right, and the kids were always in the wrong. Yeah. So I had to fight the court system to say, I'm tired of seeing dead siblings. Four of my siblings are dead on the farm. I know I could be next. We had blood dripping from the attic. We didn't know whose blood it was. I was so glad to get into a foster home and an orphanage. Oh, thank you, Jesus. At least I can live. At least my siblings have a chance to breathe tomorrow morning. And I went back and hugged my mother and told her, it's okay. It's not you. It's the demons that are in your life. Ephesians chapter 6 says, we really understand it. It makes forgiveness so easy. Because on Judgment Day, you'll realize it's not that person. It wasn't Gabrielle that said those mean things to you. It may have been a demon that was on my shoulder at that time that was saying, just say this to her. Just snap. When you say, Lord, I forgive them. That's why Jesus could easily say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Because he knew it wasn't them. Forgive every person that's ever hurt you. That, right there, is blocking your miracle. Forgive in your heart. Say, Lord, because we have said horrible things. And on Judgment Day, if the Lord says, Gabrielle, why didn't you? I wish I would have had a minute to say, hey, hey, hey. And, no, can't do it. Too late. Once it's up, once it's up. Okay. So here's this book. That's Royal Steps. Uh, they're all back there. David, would you put those back for me, please? And I'll be back there at the end if you want to order any of them or get any of them. They're all discounted for today. Okay. If I can now get to the message and I'll make it short and fast and as quickly as I can so you ladies can get going. It's called Destiny Settled. It's found in two different Bible verses. If you could write this down, Mark chapter 10, verse 29 through 30. Who has their Bible that would be willing to read? Does anyone have their Bible? You do want to read it, please? Mark chapter... Let me look at my glasses here. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 through 30. Destiny settled. Destiny settled. Yes, please. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is no one who. Okay. Um, verse 29. Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake in the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, the persecutions and the age to come, eternal life. She read it. Now I want you to read it slow. That's all right. No, you're doing good. But this is how God wants you to read it. He wants you to read it slow and with meaning. Ladies, I want you to grab this because this is your future right here. Who has lost a child? Who has, who has lost a job? Who has lost a house? Who's lost a husband? Who's lost something of value? Thank you, almost everybody. Who's lost money? Almost everybody in this room. Now, here's what Jesus says to you. Ready? Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospel. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now, now in this time? Now, in this time, right today. 
houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. With persecution. I'm sorry, he's got to squeeze that in there because it's the truth. You're going to get it all back, but it's going to hurt. You're going to get it all back, but it's not going to be easy. With persecution. Go ahead. And in the age to come, eternal life. And in the age to come. So you get it all back right now. Why don't we have it back? Oh, that might be true, Dr. Hope, but I know a lot of people that went through such a horrible life and they were such good people and they died and they never got it back. Do you think that's God's fault? Today, I want you to know we have to turn the mirror on ourselves. Forgive those behind me and say, Lord, I'm getting old. I want my settlement. Let's go to one. Who else can read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. This message, ladies, I promise you, if you grab a hold of it in your heart, not just your head, it will change your life before you walk out that door for good forever. There's five steps, easy steps of levels, if you will, of mercy and grace to go from suffering. This is my subtitle. The title is Destiny Settled. From suffering to settlement. Do not die without receiving your settlement. Who's got one Peter first, chapter five verse ten? First Peter five what? First Peter chapter five. I do. No, read it slow, loud, and with meaning. And the God of all grace, who calls you to His eternal glory in Christ, 